my way, you're gonna get feeling and dealing is how it go. I'll pick your pocket just like a pro. All right, welcome to today's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Today we have super special guest, one of my probably earliest crushes that I never thought I'd talk to in a million years. But we have Hollywood from Glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Tell us about yourself, Hollywood. Hi, Paul. You did that perfectly because that's how I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. You said it's Hollywood from Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. That's so perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. I'm really good. I'm healthy. And um, well, I'm looking outside today and it kind of looks like it's going to storm, but it's almost like 76 degrees and I'm in Nashville right now. So, you know, in the South, when you have days that are really warm and it's windy, that means rain is coming. So we have some strong storms. So um, I made some soap this morning because I do this side gig thing. Okay. Um, and I've been raising money for UNICEF because I thought, hey, uh, Russia's at war with Ukraine. And, you know, I sometimes get stuck, not stuck, but uh, watching things on TV that I shouldn't watch more of. And so I thought, what can I do that could just raise a little money? And I honestly thought that I would just raise a hundred bucks. Well, I've raised over $500 as of today selling my soap. Check that out. Cool. Is that cool? That is neat. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I just thought, what? A, and people kept buying it and buying it. I'm like, okay, I'll make another batch. And then yesterday I made another batch. And before I talked to you this morning, I was making another batch. So I've got four batches. And um, at the end, I'll tell everybody about where everything's at and all our social media. But anyway, I'm great. How about you? Uh, I, I just got back from the gym. Uh, like you, I live in Ohio. It's the weather is almost 70 degrees. It's, it's nice out and, uh, but it is windy and there's a storm coming. So. <laughs> oh. Stay saying we've got, we got the same weather coming. Yep. So yep. let's just hope we don't have any tornadoes because we know what comes with that, with that yeah. weather. Yeah. We, uh, we, so. uh, a couple years ago, a tornado went like a block away from my house and I'm, I'm standing in the front window man. going, like, why does it look like weird outside? My wife's like, get away from the window. And then all oh. the alarms start going off. So, <laughs> right. Uh. We had that too. Just what now, two years ago, two years ago, we had, we had, it was a 60 mile stretch. And that was just a little north of me, probably eight miles north. But uh, a lot of people were impacted. And, and it was just the two year reunion of that on Friday. So I saw it on the news. And I saw a friend of mine who's a musician here. Um, was posting photos and I was just, I looked at his Facebook really quick and I'm like, what are all these photos? Oh, that's too bad. And then later on in the day, I had seen on the news that it was a two year, you know, and it, and it destroyed a lot of homes and, you oh, know, yeah. people go through depression and people get, you know, they have to rebuild. And, but one thing that it does do, you know, what, what's the saying? What destroys you build? I don't know what it is, what, but what it builds something. Kill, what doesn't kill you kill makes you, you stronger makes you stronger yep that's it and thank goodness that and, and it, it is it's just you know it is what it is and you deal with it um but uh, those people are alive and that's good and they've rebuilt and they have to rebuild their lives too all over again oh yeah yeah definitely yeah yep um all right like i said i i was watching glow back in the day um i was a huge fan of i, I I'm, I'm not gonna lie the the good girls I could have cared less, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was I was I was all about the 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 the, the bad girls and uh, yeah, it, it was it, it was the the right time for you know like twelve year old Paul to to find glow. <laughs> um, as my as the the cat gets your baby out. kitty. Yep, that's the that's, that's okay. Mom. That's the wife's cat. I love that. We have two. I know. I know. We're talking about this, but I love animals, and I we saved two cats. So when I came on just before, the other cat was down here by my feet. Uh, the other one hasn't heard me, so she has. She won't be. She might come up in a little bit. But anyway, I love. I love animals. Good for you. So how old were you when you saw Glow? Uh, probably 12, 13. Oh my gosh. 
you were really young. Yeah, I was a uh... bad boy. <laughs> and you knew you liked the bad girls. That's oh, yeah, amazing. D- definitely. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, I, well, it, it, it's funny because um, I grew up and I'm a comic book nerd. I've been a comic book nerd my entire life. Um, it was always, Great. you know, watching like, you know, cartoons, G.I. Joe, all that stuff. You know, I always liked the bad guys. Right. I always liked that. Um, even when I got into wrestling when I was a kid, uh, I was never, you know, a lot of people always go, oh, you you know, Hulk Hogan fan or this or ultimate where I was like, no, I liked Roddy Roddy Piper. I like Arn Anderson and stuff like that. So I always liked the villain, you know, and then when Glow came along, they were so, nice. much, they were so much more fun. Uh, <laughs> and, right. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. That's great. And um, <laughs> well, I always think, I always think that the bad guy playing the villain is the best character to play. It just is. And um, I played both characters, but I prefer either one actually works because I played the character Wonder Woman many, many times after Glow was over. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting to be that character, to be on the other side of the coin. Uh, But I can play them both pretty well, but bad guys are fun. It's amazing because if people are booing you, you know you're doing your job. But when I would get booed and we'd come off, the, you know, after we got done and we were doing autographs before we left on our bus, I would look around in the audience and I would see these guys, they're booing me. However, they would be the first ones up for an autograph. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're booing me. Yes, but we love the bad guys. <laughs> well, the bad so, guys and all that would, would you, you feel like you're more vested because yeah. There's more character development in a bad guy for most times than there is yeah. in the good guys. And yeah. um, it, w- it was always funny because, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is true, but I was always told that when Glow would, would record, the, 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 the bad girls had, were there till the end signing autographs and the good girls could leave early because the the lines were longer for the bad girls than they were for the good girls. Is that true? <laughs> All I can say from experience, and I don't have a big head, but I literally would have to be pulled away. I was the last one being pulled away <laughs> because the line was so long. And the and the worst thing is to leave a child and little kids who are really into the wrestling and into those characters and and dressing emulating the way that you are you don't want to leave them so you don't want to leave no and my heart would be like no i can't we got to go holly we have to go and the worst thing is i'm so sorry it just so yeah i'm speaking for my character only i was the last one to be pulled away and you know and i never had a big head about it i never did i enjoyed what i did i enjoyed the audience I mean, you guys, if it's not, if it wasn't for our fans, you, you, you don't have, you don't have that. And I would always give, and I'll tell you, I, I do something about me. I give a, not a hundred percent, I give 110%. And if I was in a position where I was hiring talent, I could tell immediately, I know which ones are, are jerking you off, you know, which ones are taking the easy road, mm-hmm. uh, but somebody who goes up, you know, above and beyond, that's your, that's, that's the person right there. That's, I mean, it's just obvious. It's just a, it's a no brainer, but you can tell which ones are going to give you that and which ones are just along for the ride. Yeah. And uh, you have to work at it. It doesn't, you know, you work at it, but I think it's if, if it's a passion that you love, that that's where you shine the most for, for, because I loved it so much. And I did all four seasons of the show and the pilot. What I would do before every match, uh, let's just say the call time was 2 p.m. I would get there about 1.40 and I'd go and bring in other props and other things and have things with the cameraman already uh, in place just because even though things were choreographed because Mm -hmm. they they were. Yeah. Okay, to an extent, right? Because we're cutting down on injuries. But I love the look of surprise on someone's face when they're like, where the hell did this come from? And when I would pick up a cord from that was taped down specifically for me, because everything was not cordless back then. Yeah. So <laughs> I would just a look on their face or to hold somebody another 10 seconds longer when you weren't supposed to. Oh, my God, they would freak out. But that. 
That's what I would do. Or grab someone's drink out of the audience. I they have a beer in their hand and I take a sip, then spill it on the girl and give it. <laughs> it just, I loved it. I loved being that character. I mean, that was probably something you would have done. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah. Exactly. It, it was, um, I, I, and, and it's, it's funny as, as I've gotten older, I've actually legitimately become friends with wrestlers. Um, I've met them over the years. Yeah. Um, a, 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 a good acquaintance of mine owns a local wrestling organ, uh, federation. Um, then I met other people through them. Um, great. I, I've, I, uh, and I had one who used to always tell me, he's like, he's like, man, he goes, he goes, you need to get in a ring. I was like, man, I'm getting too old. And he goes, you know, and then he has always his, yeah. his, his favorite thing was, uh, well, yeah. Mouse Page was almost 40. And I'm like, I am 40. I don't want to get in her. I was like, I'd be a manager. I'd be in a manager in a heartbeat. <laughs> and uh, Well, you could do a few things too. Hey, I'm older than you. Obviously, if you were 12 years old, I was 21, 22 yeah. when I started. So I'm a lot older. I still get in the ring. But the thing is, Paul, I, I'm not going to do no hurricane, her Karanas or anything. I will do what I need to do to get to do what I have to do. But I mean, I won't do anything that I'm going to get hurt because I do still have seven screws and two plates in this leg because I did break it. And thank goodness in glow, no injuries for me at all. None whatsoever. I wow. think I may have sprained my ankle only because we had a new ring put in uh, and whatever was on top. I don't know what they did, but it was had this padding on it and everyone was falling they yanked that out immediately i don't know who okayed it but it was not good uh so uh that was it other than that i saw a lot of injuries i saw a lot of girls come and go i saw over 80 different girls in those four seasons that i did come and go well it, it's it's funny because i went back and um of course when netflix picked up you know the glow yeah the, the series the glow show yeah yeah um, I went back and I, I watched the documentary uh, that you guys Good. did. That's brilliant. I love that. And, and, and it's, it's, it's fun because you look at you guys and it's, you legitimately, you know, enjoy being around each other still to this day. You know, you, you look like you had a blast. It was like, um, um, you know, uh, um, to lack of a version, like a fraternity with you girls back in the day is what it seemed like well i would say I, I, i'm gonna back up a little bit okay. so i would say when i was there i i would say during glow um i thought everybody got along really really well you know we're young kids there's no, what, what do you have to bitch and complain about when you're 21 22 23 and you're on tv you know and you're touring and doing this uh, we didn't have the internet, thank goodness. Well, I would have liked if we had the internet, but let me tell you, there was a divide after you saw the documentary. Okay. Okay, we did the documentary first, and that was awesome. We did the documentary. That was really good, seeing everybody get together. That was awesome. But I noticed that there was a divide when Glow Netflix aired. When it aired, Paul, mm -hmm. there was half of us that loved it. That mm -hmm. would be me. There was the other half that goes, oh, no, that didn't happen. Oh, this person can't act. Oh, this. Th I was appalled to hear the negativity. And it divided everybody till to this day. I can tell you that right now. And I won't give you names. But for me, anything that promotes the brand, I don't care if it's positive or negative. It's bringing back yeah. the research. You know, sorry, I got something coming up here. Uh, anything that brings back the brand is uh, it, it's the plus oh, it's yeah. a positive so you know the show is not a carbon copy of glow it can, it's not because so you see mark mary doing cocaine mm -hmm. cool that didn't happen on the show and i don't care if he was doing cocaine or whatever he was doing uh the, the girls who didn't like that that pissed them off oh yeah. no our director never did that and i'm like no he gambled that was his vice but for television you have to have Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. You have to have the drama to bring the people back. So to me, regardless of what you saw there, you know, I think they did a great job. I loved everybody on the show. Now, the only thing that I would say, it would have been really nice, Paul, if they would have had cameos with some of the Glow Girls. See, I thought for sure that was going to happen. Me too. I, 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 I there was like... some kind. So then again, here comes politics. Something happened. 
You know it did. Oh yeah, well, we, we know it did. We don't own it. Uh, the farmer's daughter, Ursula, owns it. And um, maybe there was some, you know, words back and forth that you can't hire them. Or maybe, because I would have thought that they would have hired a glow. They would have. I just think it would have made all the sense in the world. I mean, everybody does it. Oh yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. yeah it, it's, it's um, as I remember setting down, my wife and I were watching it because both both her and I, grew up on glow and um she wanted to be a glow nice. girl when she was a kid and i <laughs> yes of course and, and uh and when when it came out we're sitting there watching we're like okay well i i think this one's supposed to be this character you know because you know you're it's 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 okay. creative license so oh yeah let me let me get your take let me get your take on the care yeah. on some of the characters yeah like who did you think were who who would oh, your okay. wife thought um it? I, I thought Melrose was the the amalgam of you and 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 Vine, and maybe a little MTV. Yes. Um, exactly. That's what I thought. And uh, you know, you, exactly. You go, of course, um, um, you had uh, I can't remember uh, um, Mount Fiji. Britannia. Yeah, it was. Yes. And you know, you're yeah. They, at, what they did is they mixed and matched them. You guys got it right. Yeah. You're fans. You have yeah. it exactly right because I hate when somebody goes. Oh, Melrose is Hollywood. I go, no, it's not just me. I would think that she's a mashup of Vine, MTV, and myself. Yeah. So you got that correct. Yeah. And Britannia would be a mix up of Zelda the, the Brain and Godiva. Yep. Those are those yeah. two characters. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, you can't get away with the Russian because you know who the Russian, yeah. you know, Betty Gilpin would, was, I mean, sorry, she was the Americana like girl. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it was a, a and, house um, free, but, a, but yeah, and I, I and it was cool that they did that. Yeah, and yeah, Allison Brie was the Russian. She did such a great job. Yeah. Allison Brie is one of the people that that I don't think has ever done anything. She's done bad movies, but she's never been bad in anything she's done. <laughs> so, no, she is tremendous, right? Yeah. Um, now, have, yeah. You ever, have you ever got a chance to meet any of the girls from that were on the in the movie? Or in the movies, the series. I didn't. I did not. I got to meet Melrose. Okay. I got to meet Melrose. I did an interview with Melrose. Okay. And that was awesome. Very sweet. But I didn't get to meet any of the other ladies. I live because I'm in Nashville and not in California all the time. I missed a few opportunities where some of the girls went to a WWE show and they didn't know. But Glow, it was a couple of years ago and three years maybe. And Glow. Netflix characters were there so they all got to meet them uh so but I didn't get the opportunity because I was here so that was kind of cool that they got to meet them um and I was really happy that they did the three seasons I was excited that they were able to do three seasons and then COVID came and they shut down everything and that probably gave them uh, an excuse maybe to not do the show and move on I, I wish we you know since them. everything was put put back at least a finale movie would have been would have been would have been great right and uh i, I hate to yeah, say this, that's, I, I agree with you i, I would have loved to see the original glow get some sort of finale too because it, it, if it i don't know if it did right but well, i was supposed to yeah i was supposed to win the crown in the fifth season I'm, i i should have asked him what did it take you so long for me to get the crown you know, and I was just a happy-go-lucky person, Paul. I didn't demand, oh, I need to win. Oh, I need to do this. I need to do, I just, whatever the storylines that they came up with, I went with. And maybe I should have been a little more aggressive because there were girls that were more aggressive that were winning. There were girls that were playing around that were winning. I was not playing around, and I'll use that word loosely or nicely, yeah. um, you know. There's there's such word there's such things as nepotism. Oh yeah, you know, uh, in this world. Uh, and but I was, I just enjoyed doing what I was doing. I knew that when season three and four came along, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back because a lot of the girls, ninety nine percent of the girls didn't come back. It was, or ninety eight. It was myself and Fiji and Nanuchka that all from season one and two came back for season three and four. And I was like, nah. And then they made a deal with me and I accepted that deal. And I'm like, okay, but it was different. Season three and four was different because I'd lost my original like Gilligan's Island cast. Yeah, You know, there was no Marianne and Ginger anymore. There was a new professor and there was a new Gilligan who had to take the places of those other girls. So 
they had to come in and some of them had to replace some of the older characters, which would have been crappy. I mean, I would want to have to replace Lisa Moretti, no. you know, uh, Ashley <laughs> or Tina. No way. I think that would suck. And then you got newer characters, Thunderbolt and Lightning, who did really well, and Godiva, who did really well. Uh, so, but it, it was different. Um, but, the, but like I said in the beginning, everybody got along really well, and I think we all worked tremendously together. Well, it's it's funny because was where I live, it was in syndication, and it was on right. two separate channels. It was on uh, uh, two different Fox affiliates, and okay. uh, we never got like. You got one Saturday afternoon on one Fox affiliate, and you got another one at like 11 o'clock on another Fox affiliate. And one would be from like season two, <laughs> and the other one would be from season one. You, oh my goodness. I don't think That's I've crazy. ever seen. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Glow from beginning to end in coherent order, ever. I, I mean, I've tried to like find bits and pieces of it on YouTube, and I'm sure I had like. Uh, I did yeah. tape trading back in the day and I had yeah, a lot of, of the, yeah. And, um, but I, I, I have never seen from point A to point B. Oh, that's and, too bad. Yeah. And um, it's hard for me to remember too, because certain, okay. I did so many matches with the four seasons that certain ones stand out more than others. Oh, I you, have, you know, like an album, you have your hits on your album yep. and then you have the fillers. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what it reminds me of uh, on some of mine. There are some hits like Matilda the Hun and and uh, uh, it was Matilda the Hun, myself and Vine against Mountain Fiji, Little Fiji and Americana. That's a Gestapo match. And that's in season one or two. Yeah. And we literally look like we're from Germany and we're singing there. Oh, my gosh. You would never it, get away with that today. <laughs> no way. No. Are you? <laughs> I just watched that match like about three months ago. Oh, yeah. Um, I was, I was kind of, I, I had gotten sick. I'd gotten COVID. So I was just kind of just hanging out down yeah, here hanging. and I'm watching TV and I'm sitting there. I found the, the I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, Le leading up to that, myself, Vine, and I don't know if Matilda came with us, but we went to this prop house in Hollywood and we had to pick out props for that particular match. Chains, um, we had gas masks. We had files, just whatever we could find that, that, that we thought would be appropriate for that match. And of course, like we said today, no way would we get away with that. Oh my God. No, no. did you ever have a, a favorite person to be in the ring with that you loved to wrestle? So, so we did not get along, but they were the best matches. And that was with Sally, the farmer's daughter. Oh my God. They made for the best matches ever because we went to the same high school, but we were different. I think I was two or three years older than her. So we kind of knew the same people and the teachers. And when you get 20 year olds together, girls especially, oh my God, the jealousy and oh, the anxiety and I have to win and I'm a heel. We both know that heels aren't going to win back then. They barely won. Yeah. So I, so I look at her. We'd be in a match, and she'd do something to me, and I'm like, "That is a heel move, not." And so it was tough. Oh. I had to work extra hard in those matches, but they made for one hell of a real animosity, bitch slapping, <laughs> you know, verbal you know uh, uh matches they were they were intense paul Man. god we hated each other we literally so i can't say so it was my favorite but i don't know if it was my favorite back then <laughs> uh, but they made for great matches and i would we'd have you know we'd have like on a monday or a tuesday actually i'd come in on a wednesday in season three and four but uh we'd have our meetings and we'd have our little notebooks and we'd be writing down and he'd say hollywood you're with Sally, the farmer's daughter. I'm like, again? Oh my God. I go, what the, why? But they, they, they knew that those were going to be great matches. Well, it, it's one of the ones when, when, you know, you find the chemistry that works, even if uh -huh. they, they don't like each other, it, it's, it's, you got, in the yes. ring, you got gold. So people will go yeah, back. You, to it over and over and again. you don't know that then because I wasn't on the production side of it. I'm just this new kid 
who's never been on TV a day in her life, all of a sudden is in the ring with all these cameras and a live audience and, and learning about pro wrestling and how to, you know, how, how to uh, become this character. What, what does a heel do? I didn't have that background. I didn't sit there and watch wrestling, you know, and aspire to be a pro wrestler back then at, during that time. I think the only people that you could look up to, to me was Wonder Woman back then. What else was on television for people in, in 1985, 86 to watch and, and to, you know, have a, have someone to look up to. Oh yeah. It wasn't, I don't remember ISIS. I mean, I'm older than you, so I know that these characters are on TV. Yeah, Isis and uh, Bionic Woman. Those were the ones. Bionic Woman. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're right. James so, but, <laughs> but I got to tell you that, 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 that pilot that we did, Mondo Guerrero was the trainer only for 12 girls. He trained the pilot girls only, and then he did not train season one, two, three, and four. So we only got Mondo for like two and a half months. Ooh, yeah, that's it. And you don't learn. Let me tell you, I learned as much as I could in those two and a half months. However, where do I go from there? They had other trainers, but now those trainers are are training uh, other girls that are coming in on season three and four. And then the girls started training each other. So the training got really. I'm trying to have a nice word for it. Uh, it, 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 it was different. Like, so like what I would do. Like yes. when you make a copy of a copy, you get the a slightly less. Yeah, you get yeah. you get it starts to fade. Yep. <laughs> it's not as good. I hate to say, but it's not. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. They were not pro wrestlers. Mondo Guerrero was a wrestler. He came yeah. from a huge wrestling background. Everybody knows that. Oh yeah. I don't have to say that. So what I would do is I'd watch WWF at the time. I turn it on TV and look at moves that I had no clue what they were, mm -hmm. and I. I videotape them on VHS and replay them over and over. And I thought, I am going to learn that flying head scissor. I am just going to get up there, jump up. I am not using the rope. I'm not going to, I'm just going to get up and bring that girl down. And I did that with Tulsa. Tulsa let me, nobody else wanted to do it. Oh, no, no. I'm like, well, someone's got, I got to do it to somebody. <laughs> so, you know, so a lot of the stuff I learned afterwards on TV, watching it from the other pro wrestlers that have been doing it for a while. Yeah. Well, you said you had a, you have, now if it's to be true, your IMDb page said you had a, a volleyball background. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I started volleyball seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th and softball. So now did you, it was it like the uh, uh, like just the casting call like in the movie or in the TV, in the series? Yes. Or? Oh, you're talking about this the Netflix thing? Yeah. Was was that how? Oh, absolutely. It was? So when you see Allison Brie and she goes in with a picture and resume and she's sitting down and Mark Maron says, "This is about this is this is women's wrestling, glow, gorgeous ladies of wrestling," and you see some of those girls get up and leave with disgust on their face. Same thing. I looked around and I'm like oh my god why are those girls leaving why what do they know that I don't know what am I getting myself into I was so scared but at 21 you have no fear so yes I'm scared but it was a nervous scared you know it was like a, or it was an you know an anxious like ooh, I know I can do it I can do any sport I know I can do this oh, heck yeah. that was kind of it for me I'm like and, and, and you know you have to think about it I didn't watch it on TV. I didn't see women doing it. I, I didn't, there wasn't a globe. I mean, there was wrestling and yeah. there were a couple of women. Of course, there was women all over the place doing it, but I didn't see them on television. No, the the the, the, the women's wrestling was was a, um, I mean, even when I was a, a, a kid, when we would go see wrestling, you might get a women's match. And it was always at a house right. show. So you never got to see it on TV. Yeah. It was like a, you know, an opening match. And then if you did go see a TV taping, it was a dark match at the beginning or the end. And right. so you never right. got to see it. And um, yeah, so the women never got what they should have. And there was a lot of women before us, you know, they, they worked just as hard, you know, if not harder than we did, because here, here they are proving themselves. And, you know, way back in the day, in the 50s and 40s, they're driving themselves from territory to territory. Mm -hmm. 
that's crazy. And the pay was not well, you know? Oh yeah. It was, um, but you got to give kudos. And I always like to say, you know, give respect to the, the people that laid down that foundation, you know, before I got around. And then you got the new people I've, like Kia, who's in the, um, uh, um, who played, what's her character? I'm trying to remember her character in the, in the, in the uh, Netflix thing. She said her and her brother loved Glow, and they used to pretend that they were wrestlers of Glow. You know, it was so cute to see that. So, you know, we laid the foundation for the younger generation, too, who didn't well, know much about their history. Well, it, it, it's like you said, you know, with uh, um, uh, Lisa, you know, being Ivory, going into WWE and, yes. and, and you know. Um, Kicked ass. Oh, yeah. She, and the fact that she was at uh, the Royal Rumble is uh, <laughs> she's 61 yeah oldest, oldest woman wrestling currently i guess i think um wow because i i know that that uh um was it may and and uh, uh moolah were in their 80s yeah they were wrestling. really old yes <laughs> it, it's so wow. funny because uh yeah and and this, this goes to you too is um i listen to busted open every morning so oh, yeah i love that I, I, I love it when you're on there, but yes, <laughs> when, when you got uh bully Ray talking about power bombing, uh, you know, may through a table and she's like, you know, 80 some years old. And she's like, you need to stop being a wuss. <laughs> and he's like, okay, <laughs> this just, that's that just, great. It, it, it's, it's amazing seeing how tough some of these old, old, you know, even the women's wrestlers were tough back then. And you're, you're like, they were tough. Oh yeah. They had to yes. be. You have to be, that's one thing. This is not for anybody who's a puss at all, a pussy at all. You got to have some walls behind all of it. And, you know, some people have more than others, you know, some people, <laughs> and some people it just comes naturally to them. They don't even know it. It's, 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 it's very cool. This whole, I've met so many nice people, especially now I have been doing, I never, when glow ended, I never stopped. I still continued. I did, um, uh, some independent wrestling as mm -hmm. well and then I started my own company and you know then I started doing stunt work a little stunt here and there I probably should have stayed with the stunts a little more because boy does that play pay good and that's a whole another ball game there because that's really family oriented so if you're in you're in, in yeah with that company because the residuals are so good and the pay is just amazing uh but the wrestlers work really hard i think if you're a wrestler you're a damn good actor too you know uh, well and it, a stunt person like like what i was saying earlier i was like i got friends that are wrestlers and knowing them personally and then seeing their character in the ring you're just like how do you turn that off you know, how do you go from being a, a just a, 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 I know, and you're, they're like, no, I go home. It's, it's, what that switch. And you know what I do, you guys? I make soap. See, <laughs> I get yep. off the road and I do something that is totally relaxing for me. This is just a side gig. It's not something to get rich off of. It's just, I dig what I do. I love doing that. I've been doing that for three years. I come home, I make it, and there's something about it that is just peaceful and calming. That's it. Oh, yeah. Why not? It. This, this, it is. It's just really. I don't. It's, I guess it's like making a cake. I don't know. I'd rather make soap than cake. So I, yeah. I, I'm better at the soap than I, I can do cakes. But then I'm going to eat it, and <laughs> if I eat it, then I'm going to be. I'll probably be this big, and we My, can't have that. Go, I get. I, I make food, and then I got to go to the gym and work out to get rid of the food that I. <laughs> just and when I get off here with you before it starts raining, that's what I will be doing. My ne my nephew was in town and his wife yesterday and they wanted to go to a movie. Well, what do you do when you go to a movie? You eat popcorn and you have candy and you're sitting there. And it's like, oh, I, so I feel guilty. <laughs> so I have to go and and exercise it off. <laughs> I, that's the worst part about it is I went to the movies Thursday and I, I went to the gym, then went yeah. to the movies. So I <laughs> worked. Like this is going backwards. Yes. Oh, you went. You did it backwards. Yes. You're funny. Yeah. Uh, you. You absolutely. You did it backwards, Paul. Oh yeah. That's pretty funny. Well, I, I'm. I'm a total creature of habit, though. I. I go to the gym from 11:30 yeah. to about 1:30, and oh, good for you. And it's 
then then at night i go when my i call my kid up my son he doesn't he's he's an adult and i go hey we're going to the movies he's like yeah let's go so we had <laughs> 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 to go see batman <laughs> oh have, did you see the new batman yes yes and did you like it i really did it's um okay because i haven't seen it yet it's a uh, it's early early batman it's uh i, I okay. won't give nothing away but it's it's really okay. early in his career batman that just about all I oh that's exciting yeah so oh i can't I, i'm looking forward to seeing that that's going to be good that my nephew wanted to see some kind of it was a remake of an older movie called death on the nile yeah uh i i saw it but those are the kind of movies i, I want to watch at home because i watch tcm which is turner classic yep, yep. Uh, and i know it's something that i never watched when i was younger there's no commercials but i love all the classics oh uh, yeah that's, uh, that's and that's like my thing. I probably since COVID and making soap, I have it on in the background and I see all these old classic movies and I learned so much about maybe directing and uh, photography and uh, dialects, the, the costumes, lighting. It, it's so weird for me who has been in front of the camera to want to learn about behind the scenes. That's so intriguing. And I, I, I go back and wish that I, uh, would have been able to do some of that back then. That doesn't matter though. I, I talked to Matt about it. Matt Simber is our, our director from GLOW. And I wanted to kind of just interview him for coffee one day because he did a lot of movies back mm -hmm. in, this, uh, uh, the, in the late 60s and 70s. Matt has these really obscure whatever type of movies and he was married to Jane Mansfield for a little while. So I wanted to pick his brain Mm -hmm. how, how, who, what, why? I mean, that's always, that's totally intriguing. He said to me, Jeannie, he said, I think it's incredible. There are more women directing and doing these things. And he goes, and they do it later in life. He said, it doesn't matter. He said, he goes, sure, we'll meet for coffee. So I'm being, Cal I'll be in California uh, this coming week. So perhaps I can set some time away because I got three matches to do and for me as old as I am three matches in two and a half hours that's a lot for me to do I'm older it's a lot of work and they're 25 minute matches so that's and I like to do things non-stop I don't need to stop these are mm -hmm. um little you know go 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 even though we're recording everything we could stop but you know I want to see somebody my age get in the ring and do three completely different matches and remember everything without yeah, cutting well, I, yeah, well, it's I, a lot in one day you know, it man, really I bet. is um i do have to ask you one question yes. and this, this 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 could break my heart was hollywood and vine really good friends <laughs> yes no <laughs> okay okay <laughs> that that was uh well that answered it. No. Yep, yep, yep. We were not. And because Vine was from Canada and I didn't know her. But if you ask me, was Hollywood good friends with like Lightning? Yes, because we both loved, even though she was a, a, a baby, yeah. we both we both were into rock music and we loved that 80s music. And her, her boyfriend at the time was a drummer and whoever mine was playing bass at the time and so we just were like oh man we love the same music we're gonna go see our friends bands play and yeah so we got along well Godiva and I were good friends MTV and I were good friends as well um but Vine and I because they put us in every single match together we roomed together we did our uh um raps and stuff like that and our comedy sketches together it was too much you know you need you need it's like a relationship you oh, need yeah. some time apart yep but she was a sweet girl and you know what when she left never heard from her never heard from her again ever 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 to this wow. day even you know people will go oh is she on social media some people just don't want to be on social no. media and that's okay that's all right don't condemn the poor girl <laughs> you know she did her job well she was freaking awesome cool cool well i like i said i do appreciate it i i am i i am a fan i've been a fan my since i found glow on television 
as a, you know, late night television. And um, I said this as before, a little kid, a little yeah. adolescent. And, and as I, I said before we started recording, I will put this out there. <laughs> um, m- like my first three crushes were Princess Leia, Wonder Woman, and Hollywood from Glow. And <laughs> oh, that's and, amazing. Uh, it was, it's one of them ones where uh, I, I never got to meet Carrie Fisher. I, I have never met right. um, uh, Linda. Linda Carter. Um, and, uh, but now you do comic book shows and, 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 and stuff like that. So there is a chance that I right. can actually meet you uh, down the road somewhere. Exactly. So we'll have to do something up in your area. March 20th, which is two weeks from today, is the Nashville Toy and Comic. Yeah. And that's the first time I've been to that one. So that's cool. I have a couple of comics. The last one, I love this one right here. This is by, um, let's see, John Crother wrote this. And he sat me down for about an hour. And we just did a little bio. And from that bio and a few matches, he wrote the comic. And I love it because I could have my family in it. I could have Monica Guerrero in there. I could have all the girls that were there from the beginning that did all the pilot. I love it because this is my story. Cool. So um, I'll be bringing that. And of course they want me to bring soap. Isn't that interesting? He's like, you're going to bring your soap. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, if I have any left by March 20th, I will. I've sold all that I've made. Oh, we've done so well. So I'm excited. This soap right here that I was telling you about, um, all the proceeds, 100% of this is going to unicefusa.org. Okay. I think you saw that on my page. Yep. Yep. So yep. today we went, oh, yeah. Yep. So I'm excited my, about that. My dog's back here complaining. So hopefully we'll be in Ohio somewhere. Cool. Which would be uh, nice. Yeah. Um, if, if not, I do, I do get down to Kentucky. I do get over to Indiana from time to time. So if you're close. We can in do, those we can, areas. Yep. So uh, the, the big ones that I love, I love LA Comic-Con. That's great. LA Comic-Con is great. We've been doing that forever. And then of course I do a lot of the wrestling comics on the East coast. And I was just in New York, not on this one, but six months ago for uh, the big event and a big event. They like to do every other year on that. They don't, mm-hmm. they might have different people coming in all the time. So I actually was scheduled for this weekend, but I told the promoter, I go, I just did it. And then I got back with them. He goes, you just did it. I go, I told you that I just did it. He goes, okay, but I can do other stuff with you. I said, no, let's wait. I go, let's do the comic. Let's do it in 2022. And then we'll do all the other stuff that you have for me. And then we'll, you know, we'll get two birds with one stone. A lot easier that way. I, yeah. uh, I was, I love that. doing the comic. I love doing the conventions. And what I was saying earlier, I had not ever, I always stayed in this business. I loved it. I tried to keep the na- name alive. So before Glow Netflix, before we had our Glow documentary, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, I was still out there doing these conventions and wrestling. Yeah. Didn't give it up. I didn't give it up like some of them. It's, um, well, what's funny is um, I was watching, oh God, uh, Death Stalker. And I'm sitting there watching that. And then there's Matilda. I was like, Oh, I forgot yes. she, was in this. <laughs> she just beats the crap out of death stuff. She did a lot of stuff, boy. I forgot all the things that she did. I went over to her IMDB and she had a lot of funny stuff on there. I'm like, oh my gosh. Wow. I don't I can't say that I saw all of those movies, but you know, I don't know if you like horror, and I like kind of horror with comedy in it. On mm-hmm. uh, Saturday nights is Spingooly, and yep. I love watching he's he's big into wrestlers. Oh yeah, Did yeah. You know that? Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. He's he's had a uh, uh, Jerry Lawler on there. Yes, he has. So you know what I did? I bought one of the t-shirts. I cut it up because I hate just a regular looking t-shirt mm-hmm. by me. I cut it up a little bit and I put it on my Twitter page, and I think I stuck it on their Facebook page. And then I the only one of the only times I wasn't home to watch it, and and it didn't record. Is when he put my picture and said, this is Hollywood from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Uh, my recorder didn't record it because the direct TV would only give you five at a time. I didn't click it to do all of his, but I went over to lightning's house and I was able to uh, get it off of hers, but, but he had me on there. It was very cool. Ooh. So I'm thinking about going to Chicago and go and being on the show. We're, we, we were talking about it 
last year and of course he says after covid he goes we're not doing anything with people coming on the set so yeah you might see me on spinguli show cool 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 that'd be fun yep i i i watched spinguli yeah. but I, I have to watch it later because i i own a comic book shop yeah and um uh, i close at eight o'clock uh, on saturdays so by the time i eat oh yeah and then come home i just i just dvr it it's and i later. watch it later yep <laughs> Well, some of the stuff is just hilarious. I laugh so hard. I watched one about revenge of the puppet people or, or something. Yeah. And it was some scientist that took people and he was shrinking them down. Oh my, I've never even seen these things before. So they're kind of funny to watch. Oh yeah. So I, they're I, silly, I, but I love horror. I, could, I wrote, I wrote, my friend and I wrote a horror script. This is way before uh, all the, um, the zombies mm -hmm. uh the, this is way before that was a craze and um i have a 78 page script so who knows anybody wants to do this movie we could of course it'd be very low budget but it would be fun to do it didn't just i think the Foo fighters just did one yeah yeah it's a uh, studio 666 that's it yep and the fact that they did an album as yeah. the fake band from the movie so they're the Foo Fighters, oh my God. but the band that that uh, opened up the, I guess, the Gate to Hell or something like that. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. there's a yeah. like a thrash death metal band, and they are the thrash <laughs> death metal band. So <laughs> I'm like, I love it. That's great, and the fact they just went ahead and did a full album is just insane. So I see, I I love that create be able to create like that that and, and then it, I saw them. I think they were on Jimmy Kimmel or something like that. And he was interviewing them, and I don't remember. I don't know all the all the guys' names in the band besides the drummer and the singer Dave. Yeah. Uh, but they were talking about their lines, how they were doing their lines, and who got it the best. And one guy, I don't know which one, he's like, uh, I would just look at the script the day of and. They, and then Dave goes, yeah, he goes, and you had to do like 12 or 14 takes. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to, you know, you have all these lines and then you're supposed to memorize it and then try to create and then make it look normal. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, it's not easy, <laughs> you know, it's oh, so yeah. kudos to them, man. I, I have to check it out. I got to check out the film. It's cool. I have a friend that's doing one, actually. I just thought about it. Um, and because it's not on my mind, because we were supposed to shoot in May, but because of money, uh, yeah. we're pushing it back to October. So this is going to be a parody horror movie. So it's going to be, what would Jason, uh, what would, um, who are the other characters? There's Jason. Freddie, Michael. Uh, Freddie and face. Michael do on their day off. That's it. Thank you. That's it. And I've got a, a little part in it. So that will be happening in North Carolina in October. <laughs> cool. And I already got my lines. I already, I've looked at all my stuff. I'm like, okay, this is, this is, this is fun. This cool. will be great. So we're pushing it back to October. Yeah. It's, um, it, I, I have friends in, in the movie, but uh, like that make movies locally and they're always yes. pounding out movies left and right. It's like, how do you guys find the time? Ooh, good. And they do. I, that's what I wonder. That's they the, find the time because that's what they love to do, Paul. You yep. just do. Oh yeah. If it's something that you have a passion, a passion for, you find the time. Oh yeah. I agree. Good for them. Yep. That's what. Uh, then, then, then I got people asking me about my me. They're like, "How do you have time to do everything you do?" And I'm like, "That's right. I I, I don't go to bed till two, three o'clock in the morning." <laughs> See, I'm getting older, so I need my beauty sleep. I'm bad, but my cats. Okay, the cats. I don't know if yours do this, but they wake me up every morning. I know it's 5.09, 5.15, 5.10. .10. And then I try to stay in bed a little longer. And then they're making noises everywhere. Noises. The other one, Lala, which is not here right now, she jumps up to where the switch is. Mm -hmm. And she turns the fan off and on. Because, you know, the fan that you have maybe above your bed, you have yep. a light fan. Mm -hmm. She jumps up and turns it off. She wants your attention. <laughs> See, I got, I got, I got, I got the, this here dog right here. Uh, she will, so um, if, if I fall asleep over here on the couch or something, I'm watching TV yeah. or something at night and it gets too late, she'll poke me to make me go upstairs and go to bed. 
Oh, she's like your wife. <laughs> yeah, she's doing, she, she's doing the job for your wife. Honey, come to bed now. Yeah, because my, my wife, Aww. my wife works at a, at a doctor's office, so she's got to get up really early in the morning. Well, I go to bed late yeah. at night, and um, our hours don't right. coincide till after seven o'clock at our night. Opposite. And um, yeah. then we spend time together, but the dog decides that she wants to uh, she wants to lay down here while I'm watching tv or recording or stuff like that like right now she wants to hang out underneath right. my desk and uh so uh, well you know what because you're not paying attention to her oh no i she she's she, you're not she paying you're talking to me yep anytime i'm that's paying what attention I'm saying. to talking to somebody on here she's got to be right here she's got to she's got to right there sure. yep oh that's so cute. yep that's so cute we uh we almost I love got that we almost got another dog the other day, but I had to take time. Uh, and didn't get it. Uh, yeah. I got I, so. Well, you, it's a lot of work. That's why we don't have dogs because we're both on the road a lot, and so it's not fair. So I need no, to be it's... around. I feel I'm guilty just leaving the cats. Now oh, yeah. cats are pretty self sufficient, but but mine are different. They have to have wet food. They don't want just dry food. They have to turn their nose at dry food. They're like, no way. So I got to have somebody come yeah. in and give them their wet, wet food. food. Clean. Yeah, they have to have it. And I'm one of them. Lala is so picky lately. My my husband will go, is that breasted chicken? Oh, shoot. I have a low battery. Darn it. Oh, are you there? Yep. I'm still here. Okay. Yep. Uh, he, uh, the, he'll go, is that breasted chicken for us or is it for the cat? <laughs> uh, and I go, it's for the cat. Got, got I love like, your sorry. pets. I go, we'll make ours different, but she likes chicken and she likes some lunch meat. And then of course she wants the most expensive cat food. She will not eat anything cheap. And right now it's very difficult to find stuff on the shelves. I don't know if in Ohio. It's, it's the same I mean, way. It's the same way. Oh um, my gosh. My, it's my, pissing me off. My son's cats, um, my son's cat was uh, was my grandmother's cat, so my grandmother right. always bought her the high end food and all that stuff. Yes. Like that. So now, you if you get lucky, you can go get it. So they buy it the big box whenever they get a chance. Now my cats, they love the cheap food. Those they will that you get uh, like high end dry food. They'll they'll push no it way. out of their bowl to try to eat what's little like if they can find yeah. old stuff. So. Yeah, my great cat, my great cat will eat the cheap food but the but lala the t she will no way she's like and then the, she does that scratch thing i put it down the scratch around the bowl scratching yep. the floor i mean it's no i don't like that shit nope. at all so <laughs> no hey, my my thing is going to go out here in a little bit okay so yeah um i do appreciate it thank you so very much for being on here um any other questions paul um probably but <laughs> um well we can do a part two yeah we, we can, can do, do part, part two, two we'll, in a little while yeah um this will drop not monday but the next the following monday it'll drop at noon eastern okay. uh standard yeah, time. Let, so, let me know. yep and i'll drop you a line let you know it's gonna pop up there um and then uh, we'll get together and do a part two down the road and um like i said we can do part two for your for your fan yeah. For your fans that want to follow, if you don't know anything where Hollywood's at, I have a Twitter, which is um, Glow Hollywood. And then I have an Instagram, Official Glow Hollywood. And if you're interested in the, my little side gig, soaps are at hollywoodbotanica.com with a K. And I'm telling you, I keep itching my nose, but the, it's, it's like, woo, there's soap here. And it's making me itch my nose. So that's why I'm itching my nose. I'm like, <laughs> woo. And all of these soap that you see, there are no preservatives in any of these. They're actually very good for your skin. So it's a cool thing. Cool. But yeah, let's do a part two. All and, right. And um, I appreciate you having me on the show. And I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. You're so welcome. All right. I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go walk and work out before it gets rainy here. I'm going to run upstairs and talk to my wife because I have another interview in 30 minutes. Oh, all right. Bye-bye. Tell your wife I said hi. Take, I will. <laughs> Take care, Thank Paul. you. Thank you. Have a good one. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, I'm Hollywood. Sure, I like to party, but I won't drink and drive. Alcohol in your system dulls your senses. If you think you can handle a car after a few drinks, you're making a mistake. A grave mistake.
thank Hollywood so very much. Um, we will put some more info here at the end of the episode where you can follow her and find her on online. Uh, super great person. We will have her back again soon. And as always, Group Therapy is brought to you by Are You Game, the best comic book collectible shop located in 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And you can follow, watch me every Friday night on Sci Fridays and every Saturday morning on Saturday Morning Serials. And you can watch us here on Group Therapy Podcast every Monday at noon. And we will see you next time. Take care.